Okay, good day, everyone. Um, we're glad to have you join us on this very important webinar um, for today. Um, it's the Yabo Voice once again, and um, we are excited to have you join us on this platform yes again. Um, so good day, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, from wherever it is that you're joining us from. And we are so, so very grateful that each time we reach out, um, that you're always, always, always responding to the call to be here. It promises to be very educational today uh, because we know that we're going to pass sound um, information across to everyone. We are looking at something very germane. A lot of people are not prepared for it. A lot of people are not ready, but I can tell you that from today, the information will be passed across and so many people will be ready to be able to walk out and to be able to do the very best for themselves. All right, so this is Yabo Voice. You're welcome. And so before we roll out more on this um, um, important discussion for today, um, the Ed Clinicals um, is here to formally welcome us um, to this platform. Dr. Oluwani will be welcoming us um, to this very important uh, platform, but please, just understand that there are so many people that need this information. And so please prompt them. We are Zooming this live on um, here, and then we are streaming live on, on, on Facebook. And so please join us um, or help us to tell them that yes, we are starting this and we are ready um, to roll out as much as, as possible. So give them a prompt, let them join us, let them join us, let them join us, let them join us, okay. And so the head of clinicals, Dr. Luani, will formally welcome us to this webinar. Over to you, sir. Thank you. All right, sorry, um, a bit of technical itch there. Um, Dr. Luani would come up shortly or try to just adjust one or two things. And I can show you that it promises to be a very um, exciting time today. Um, shortly, Dr. Luani will be coming on um, to speak to us and to welcome us um, for this, to this webinar, very important webinar on old age and loneliness. Nobody wants to be isolated. Oh, the last isolation was really, really traumatizing for a whole lot of us um, to cope with, to deal with. That it was really, really um, very, very traumatic for us. Uh, but then, um, no, we had to just bear that. We had to go through that um, terrible period. We had to take, um, go through that period. Um, okay, so Dr. Oluwani will be here to talk to us. Over to you, um, Dr. Oluwani. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the medical director, Dr. O.A. Oweye, who is unavoidably absent, I want to welcome everyone to this edition of Yaba Voice. As you know, on this platform, we try to bring up topical issues of mental health importance in order to educate and create awareness about various issues um, that affects mental health in order to improve the mental health of the populace. And today we are talking, bringing up an important topic, which is old age and loneliness, mental health implications and solutions. Old age is a stage of life where individuals haven't been productive, haven't put in many years to contribute to the product productivity in the country, they happen to now be vulnerable to certain physical conditions. And also there are some social changes at this stage of life. As you are aware, 
during this stage of life, children who have left home, there is tendency for children to have left home. So you have a situation whereby only the elderly couples are together. Some will have even had their spouses or uh, happen to be no longer um, around. So there is a tendency at this stage of life for people to be lonely, coupled with certain uh, biological changes that may be taking place in the system of individual at this stage of life, there may be a predisposition to certain mental health problems. So these are things that we want to look at today. We want to discuss what the problems are and how we may prevent them. Old age does not have to be a stage of sovereign. In fact, it should be a stage where such individuals will enjoy and reap the fruit of their labors. But if certain things are not put in place, it may turn out to be a stage of suffering. We don't want this. So this is why Yaba Voice today, we have decided to look at this issue. Again, uh, all over the world, we know that the uh, population is getting uh, aged. So there is tendency because of scientific advances for people to live longer. Even in Nigeria, that is a relatively young population, we are having more people who are living longer. So we don't want this stage of life to be a stage of suffering. That's why we have decided to talk about this uh, issue. And today we have two experts who are going to do justice to this. The first person is uh, Dr. Odugua, who is a senior consultant psychiatrist and expert in old age mental health at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Institute in Yaba, Lagos. And um, he has more than 20 years of experience in this area. So today, he'll be bringing in his uh, wealth of experience to talk to us about this problem. And the second person that will be doing justice to this is Dr. Memuna Kadiri, who is also a highly experienced psychiatrist in this um, area of specialization and somebody who's passionate about creating awareness and advocacy, mental health advocacy. The two of them are eminently qualified to treat this topic. And I want everybody to sit back, relax, and be attentive so that we'll learn from them. And not only that, we'll make sure that we implement whatever they are going to tell us today. Thank you once again for joining us. God bless you all. Thank you so very much, Dr. Oluwani, for that arousing welcome. Um, like I said, Dr. Oluwani is the head of clinicals and also part of the arrow head of the Yabu Voice team. And like he had introduced, yes, we will be looking at something very germane. Um, yes, old age is uh, synonymous with quite a whole lot of things. Yes, people are not even treated well. You see some of these old ones on the street and it's like, they are just left there, just, just left hanging, a lot of them waiting to die and quite a lot of them. I don't want to talk about it today. I want to look at what are the peculiarities with this, um, the stage of life, as well as the issue of loneliness. Um, that's one of the things, major things that you know, they had to combat with. And like you had said, we have veterans, people who are well qualified to be able to do this in the house today. And so we won't kickstart this. Remember, please tell people around you who needs to be here. That's yes, we are starting this very important topic. So let them join us here or they can join the Facebook page of the Apple Voice um, as we go on in this discussion. Please also remember that you can send your comments and your questions to the chat box. We will be there to read them and also to answer them. Dr. Odugura, um, when we talk about old age, what are we talking about exactly? And what are the peculiarities of, of this stage of, of life? Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, my medical director, ably represented by the head of clinical services, Dr. Luwani. Good afternoon, my distinguished guests. And I send my special greetings to our elderly um, audience on this um, platform. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator, for your question. The definition of old age has not been agreed you know, from culture to culture. It actually differs from country to country. However, according to the United Nations, 
Old, old age refers to that stage of the life cycle that begins from age 60 years and over. This, however, varies from country to country, as I earlier said. For example, in the United States of America, you have old age starting from 65 years and above. Now, people have further gone to you know, classify old age. It's been classified into the young old, which is 65 to 74 years, the middle old, which is 75 years to 84 years, and the old old, which is 85 years and above. Now, studies have shown that the elderly group from age 60 and above, you know, that this demography is going to increase, it's going to double from 2015 to 2050. It's going to double from a rate of 12% to 22%. So this group is a very, very important group in our, demo, in, in our demography. The aging process is usually characterized by a gradual decline in functioning of the body systems and the organs, and it makes the elderly vulnerable. But it's also worthy to note that old age is not all dark and gloomy. It's a time for one to relax, experience opportunities for more leisure, like traveling. It's a time to spend with your family and extended family members, a time for religious activities, social functions, and so on. And we should not forget also that old age is also associated with wisdom because they have more experiences with life challenges. All right, thank you so very much, Dr. Odugua for that. Um, you know, she talked, said something very germane, and that, that caught my attention. And that is the fact that it's not all dark and gloomy. And so, invariably, it, it simply means that um, it also could be a time of fun, a time of relaxation, a time of enjoyment, a time of, you no know, just looking back and you feel good at all the life i have given you. So, when we are saying peculiarities doesn't mean that it's all bad. Yes, it's, it's still good too. All right, so we are moving to our next um, guest, um, Dr. Memuna Kadri, who will be talking to us, uh, maybe defining and helping us understand what does loneliness mean? Are we talking about loneliness or are we talking about Dr. Memuna? Over to you, ma'am. Um, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to the medical director of um, psychiatry, Pastor Yapa, Dr. Weye who is ably represented by Dr. Luani, the head of clinical services, to my senior other colleague, Dr. Dugwa, and to our amazing elderly people in this group today. Uh, we don't take it for granted. Uh, you find it time to join us. And all the other participants who have, who have taken time out to join us in the um, Voice of Yapa. So basically what is loneliness? We know as human beings, we are social beings who rely on safe sick and secure social um, surroundings to survive, not only just to survive, but also to thrive. So loneliness in the sense is that it's a universal human emotion that is both complex and unique to each individual. So when we look at it, some people will say loneliness is also known as a social isolation, but this is a distressing feeling that accompanies the perception that one's social needs are not met, whether in quantity or in quality in relationship to um, your social uh, needs. And when you look at loneliness, it is common. It's as common as one in every three adults, you know, um, uh, being in that lonely state. And with the advent of COVID-19, we know what happened. <laughs> with the lockdown, social distancing, and all that, it has become even worse. But it can be temporary, and sometimes it can be on a long-time basis. But it must be noted on this platform, since it's an awareness platform and it's for advocacy, that loneliness is not a sign of vulnerability, neither is it a sign of fragility or weakness. And it does not necessarily have to be to, for those that are physically isolated or to the elderly. We do know that some people, some younger people can also be lonely. So it's good for also for us to differentiate between what is being alone and being lonely. And researchers have helped us to you know, show us that difference uh, between being alone and being lonely, knowing fully where that loneliness and social isolation 
can affect both our physical and mental health. While loneliness is marked with feelings of isolation, despite wanting social connection, it is often perceived as an involuntary you know, separation, rejection or abandonment. While on the other side, being alone, sometimes is that state of solitude. You just want to be alone, to reflect, and it's most times seen as a voluntary thing. And these are you know, um, differences that we should you know, thoroughly look into and not see being alone and using it interchangeably with being lonely. Loneliness is you know, a state where you don't want to be, but sometimes being alone can be a good place where you want to just reflect, refocus, and you know, um, redirect your purpose of life. All right, thank you, Dr. Memuna. So what I hear you say is that um, you it's a choice to be lonely, or yes, you can choose to be lonely, uh, but then loneliness now is a state of mind, and so you yeah. can experience loneliness even in the midst of people. Yeah. You can experience loneliness when you have a room full and everyone is um, around you. Yeah. Okay, so as we go on, Dr. Memuna will be telling us what are the causes of loneliness and um, how does it manifest, what I say. But well, let's now look at it. Now, we, we are tying old age and loneliness together. And I'm going to be asking Dr. Odugua, is there a link between old age and loneliness? And is it a normal process or a normal part of, um, uh, of old aging? Thank you very much for that question. And it's a very important question. Now, there's a, there's a link, there's definitely a link, you know, with old age and loneliness. And the way it is, is that one of the major things that links old age to loneliness is social isolation. And what do I mean by social isolation? This is a reduced, a lack of social connections. Now, let me give you an example. I remember when we were young children, when we were growing up, many families, including mine, you know, had cousins, had, you know, family members living with us, right? But now we find out that a lot of people now, you know, it's all about me, myself, and I. In fact, a lot of grandchildren grew up with their grandparents in those days. But you find out that this extended family system is fizzling out, or it has practically fizzled out, right? So that's one problem where the issue of social isolation can come in. You know, the erosion of the extended family system. Now also you have children, you know, looking for greener pastures. So you find children migrating away from their parents or from the base, you know, from the abode or from the area where their parents live looking for greener pastures. For example, they move from the villages to the cities, or they could move from the cities you know, to bigger and more developed countries. So the vacuum is created in two ways. You know, One, the extended family system being eroded. The children you know, leaving their parents looking for greener pastures. So that's another way of creating a vacuum. So at the time in old age, when these parents need their children, the parents are not, no, no longer there to provide those needs for their parents. Now you find out that many of these parents and elderly people are at the mercy of strangers being their caregivers, right? So a parent will be looking or an elder person will be looking at, ah, at this time of my life, when I should be enjoying my old age and enjoy my children, you know? They are not, they are not there because of very genuine and genuine reasons. And now I'm at the mercy of strangers. So this gives them a feeling, you know, a feeling of loneliness. They are more vulnerable to those feelings of loneliness. So that's one of the major links between um, old age and loneliness. That's social isolation. Now, as I said earlier, old age is not all about, um, you know, being dark, and gloomy, right? We find a lot of people who enjoy their old age, you know? Of course, we don't pray for misfortune and we don't pray for calamity, 
But you find that a lot of people that enjoy their old age, this is something they have planned for over the years from their youth, you know. They have planned for it consciously and subconsciously. Eating healthy, doing regular exercises, going for their medical checkups, you know, preparing for their pension, avoiding bad habits like smoking, you know, drinking alcohol and so, and so forth. And most importantly, they prepare for it in such a way that they have a wide social network. They have a wide base, you know, a wide social network such that by the time they get to old age, they still have people they can reckon with. They still have people, they still have family and friends that they can call, that they can visit, that can visit them. So old age doesn't necessarily have to do with loneliness, you know, but old age is something I believe we need to prepare for consciously and unconsciously. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Otukura. And, and you know, she mentioned something very germane now, and that's the fact that old age is something that we have to prepare for, either consciously or unconsciously. I remember having a patient, a woman came and said, Excuse me, everyone. No, she came with this serious anxiety and every other thing. And then she was referred to the department. I got to see her. She's about 73 years old. And now she said, I am very, very anxious. I can't sleep. I, I have a lot of fears and every other thing. And when we begin to look at all of that, this woman was looking at everyone around her who had died and other things like that. And nobody is even living with her again. No, it's, it's just like everybody is just going. Now let's look at it, Dr. Memuna Kadri. What are the causes of loneliness in, in, in the old age? And what are those risk factors that are involved when we're talking about loneliness in, in, in old age? Thank you, Mom. Thank you very much. Um, I must say that all of us all, all want to grow old. Um, that is a prayer. Um, that's what we do. That's why we do all the things we are doing right now, you know. Um, having a healthy lifestyle, um, good lifestyle modification, um, just to be, just to get to that old age. So that, you know, when, when we, we die and it's time for burial, it's a celebration of life, not, you know, people crying or coming around to say that, oh, that, she was just too young, you know, to, to exit the surface of the earth. But it's also good for us to know that about five to 20, about 5% of, 200 million Nigerians are, uh, you know, in this old age group, 60 years and above. And in just eight years time, meaning in 2030, one in six people in Nigeria will be 60 years and above. Despite all our challenges, we all know what we are talking about, the bad roads, no electricity, the poverty and all that. It shows that, you know, we are still going to get to that, you know, that prime age of 60 years and above. So aging is associated with functional decline, health decline, social support becomes a bit poor and you know it, you become more needy at that point. But in many Nigerian families, according to tradition before now, this responsibility of providing long-term care and social support for elderly people is usually you know burdened by the women in the family or the, the duty of the wives, you know, but however, modernization, urbanization, moving from Ibadan to Lagos, uh, um, to Bini, you know, all those movements up and down has made that a bit more difficult. In general, because loneliness has no single common cause, the prevention and treatment of the potentiality and damaging situation varies dramatically. So for example, it can be a lonely child who is struggling to make friends in school. It had, this child has different needs from an elderly person who has just lost his or her spouse. So many families, especially in Nigeria, are either unavailable or unable to provide long-term care and support for people within that um, age group. So due to the level of poverty in the country. And so what are the things that can cause loneliness in elderly? One constant denominator is bereavement. We all grow old, the organs in the body grow old. And of course, death is imminent. It's something that nobody can, you know, um, know when it will happen, but we want to all grow old together. So bereavement is one of the major causes of loneliness in the elderly. Many old ones will have lost their spouses, maybe lost their children. And with the, you know, insecurity in the, in the, in the, in the country, you will see some elderly people losing their children. 
we are afraid of moving from Lagos to Abiyakuta because of kidnapping. We are afraid of moving from Lego, um, um, Abuja to Kaduna because of banditry. There's so much. The air, even in the, the airspace, uh, they cancel your flight, delay your flight. So there's so many things that are happening that just makes you feel like everything is just falling apart. So bereavement is a very common denominator when it comes to causes of loneliness in the elderly. Then retirement. The civil service rule says that 60 years or 35 years in service. A 60 year old person in this current dispensation is very young. Uh, our current people that are contesting for the Nigerian presidency, they are, most of them are about 70 years of age. But you know, that is also a lonely part when you just find yourself retired and uh, maybe you didn't plan well or you didn't plan ahead and you just find out that you know functionality so you wake up and you go to work from eight to four eight to five every day all of a sudden you don't really have anything really to do so that retirement can be a major source of loneliness you know as you grow older then change in living environment a lot of us because of that sense of uh, belonging i wanted to look uh, of, uh, look after our older ones, you the Jackpa syndrome, a lot of you know young people now traveling here and there, relocating and all that. They take their elder parent along. So imagine me living in Lagos, taking my um 60 something year old mom or something year old dad to Lagos, who is he or she is not even familiar really with I'm in a gated estate, quiet in the morning, I'm running out of the house. Lagos traffic is not your mate. It will just affect you if you don't even know what, how to navigate. And then I'm just saying, hey, mom, hi, hi, hi. Make sure you make mom eat and all that. And I go to work. I come back in the evening, maybe around like six, if I come back early, you know, <laughs> depending on the part of Lagos I live in. And then I'm also, I'm already tired. I'm like, have you eaten? Have you done? And I've not really spent quality time. So you find out that that change of environment start making her feel down. And before you know it's happening, loneliness setting, sometimes you find them, they even get depressed because they don't, they are not in that, they are normal, regular setting where they will visit Iyasikira, who has, uh, you know, uh, the son just came back, or Iya been to whose daughter is getting married, or just checking up on one another. So change of environment is another very important um, cause for loneliness in the elderly. Then poor physical state. We all know that the age, there are some other medical medical conditions that are affiliated with old age, like hypertension, um, you know, um, diabetes, but though it's not like it's an old age thing, but with increasing age, you know, they are more at risk. And of course, physical health challenges, deafness, blindness, all those things can make the person, you know, more, a bit more lonely because they are dealing with physical health challenges and it can be isolated. Then, of course, financial difficulties. Who doesn't understand this? We all know what that is. With age and everything, you retired, but though you are not tired and you don't have the financial capacity to take care of yourself, that can be a major issue. And sometimes you find the elderly because the, the, all the older children are out of the house, they get a younger girl and they start starting a new family again. And that is a huge financial you know, implication. And if they are not, if they've not planned well, that can really hamper and affect them. So they will be among people, but they are actually lonely because of all the issues that are affecting them. So financial um, difficulties is another cause. Rural urban migration of families. I talked about the change in environment. This is also another way that migration. A lot of people just, you know, in rural communities, everybody is heading to Lagos. Lagos is where the money is. Forgetting that, you know, you have to wake up early in the morning to go to where you are going, and you, you know, you sleep late, and the traffic in Lagos can be frustrating. So, rural urban migration of family members that reduces the number of people that the elderly generally we have around them. So that be, that can be a major in, in, in another cause of loneliness. Then, of course, fear of becoming a burden. For the, million, for the mothers of our age group, 40s, 50s, and, and thereabout, some of us have already started becoming grandmothers. You know, and we don't, some of us are telling ourselves, no, we are not going to come to our children's houses. You are not our retirement plan. You know, if you need anything, come to us and all that. That becoming a burden can also isolate you when you feel that if you go to some, like, for example, my dad, 
is more comfortable being in my brother's houses than being in my own house because I'm his daughter. But the, the, my brother is his son. It's more of him associating my brother's house as his house as against my house. As a, so if he comes to mine, maybe two days, three days, he's out because he's that afraid of becoming a body not to me. Or like my brother's house that you may say like two weeks or even one month in it. So that is also a cause of loneliness. And I'm, I may, I'm most likely going to be in a better capacity to look after him because I'm a natural nurturer as a woman. So that is a cause of loneliness. And of course, loss of network of friends and companies. You know, when people have lost people around them, you know, with COVID, we know what happened. So it's not that mom, elderly people died, but people that, you know, people died around us. And, you know, we, the younger ones, we are, it's easy for us to move around because we are more energetic and still productive. The elderly people are more in that their space. And, you know, that loss of network can lead to that loneliness when it comes to uh, being an elderly uh, person. Thank you so very much, Dr. Memuno. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it is fair or anything, but you know, really know a lot of that. And I was like, hey, functional decline. Hey, <laughs> we will become more needy. And then when we now become needy and there's nobody to help our need, that's a problem. I, I recall sometimes ago when, when they called that my dad would see, and I needed to go home and I needed to come to work. And it was a clash. You know, I was like, even if I travel home, I will still have to come back. I can't stay definitely there. And I recall at a time to when my grandpa was sick and they brought him to stay with us. And the man stood outside one day and I could see from his face that this man was not happy. And I asked him, I said, sir, what is it? He said, I want to go home. You know, in my mind, I could not comprehend what he was going to do in the village. There is no light, there is no nothing. What are you going to do there? And he said, I'm missing my friends. <laughs> I could not laugh. But that's, that's, that's it for them. And it's once when they now begin to now lose that circle of friends, circle of support, it becomes very huge and jump. And you said something also very germane, uh, which I think maybe policymakers on this platform will begin to look at it. Retiring at the age of 60, we know that yes, so for some people there, there is a decline, but for some other people, they're still good and ready to go. And the environment is also not so enabling for a whole lot of people that even after retirement, you cannot begin to function in other vocation or any other thing. And I have observed that sometimes when people now retire, that's when the illness and every other thing begin to come. So why don't we create a, 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 a structured avenue for them to keep working, maybe at a reduced time or any other thing, but at least they are still there and that helps to sustain them better. We'll come to all of the solution i'm just surrounding in my head but you no know, i know a whole lot of things is um, going on but then dr um Oduhura, what are the mental health implications of um old age and loneliness thank you ma'am okay thank you very much so i'll just mention you know a few um and i'll mention things that we can actually reckon with so i i, I should think one of the first is you know anxiety you know the elderly will become anxious when they are lonely and when they are alone, especially for the fear of if something bad happens to me, for example, if I have a fall or if I have a heart attack, who is going to come to my rescue? So these kind of things play in their mind. Or if I die, for how long will my dead body be in the house before someone realizes you know, that I'm dead? So anxiety, the fear of the unknown, you know, is a major problem for the elderly. Sometimes they can just be there and all of a sudden they just develop a panic attack, develop a panic attack because of these anxious feelings due to their loneliness and due to the isolation. Now, the issue of sleep problems is not far, you know, from the issue of anxiety. Someone that is anxious, you know, would not sleep. And this sleep problem I'm talking about is insomnia. Is either they don't sleep all through the night or they sleep at the beginning of the night and wake up in the middle of the night and they're not able to sleep again. Or they keep sleeping and waking up, sleeping and waking up and having fitful sleep. So you find out that a lot of these mental health issues, you know, they are related to one another. Now we talk about depression as well. People that are isolated, you know, and people that are lonely have been found to have a high level of depression. And what do I mean by depression? They have feelings of being low, unhappy most of the day, nearly all days. You know, there's lots of energy. There's lots of drive. 
There's lots of appetite, inability to, inability to sleep. And they just start wondering, where did I get it from? You know? So this depression can be so bad that there are feelings of hopelessness and worthlessness that comes in. And when people feel hopeless and worthless, the next thing they feel helpless. And once someone is start, starting to begin to feel hopeless, worthless and helpless, we should be looking out for suicidal ideas and su suicidal rates, you know, people that are depressed and people that are uh, depression in the elderly and the fact that they are isolated can lead them to commuting suicide. And these things we are talking are not far-fetched. They happen now and again in our environment. Other mental health challenges that can occur, you know, in the elderly are the issues of alcohol and drug abuse. Most of the time, because elderly people are not sleeping well at night, they tend to abuse tranquilizers, tranquilizers like your Valium, tranquilizers like your Lexotan. They also have been found to abuse alcohol, especially in the male folk. They tend to abuse it just to relieve the symptoms of anxiety, the symptoms of sleep problem, the symptoms of depression, and so on. So you find out that there's a higher rate of alcohol and drug abuse. We should not leave out the fact that loneliness, isolation in old age can lead to cognitive impairment. Yes, it can lead to cognitive impairment. It has been found out that a lot of people who are lonely and isolated eventually end up having dementia. And how can this happen? This happens because you find out that people who are depressed are also predisposed to having dementia. And people that are isolated tend to have a low social stimulation. They don't interact with people, they don't do so many things and so on. So it reduces their level of social stimulation. And it affects you know, their level of cognitive functioning, thus leading to cognitive decline and ultimately you know, leading to dementia. So I believe that the issue of loneliness in the elderly should not be taken you know, with a kid's glove because it has mental health consequences. Thank you so very much, Dr. Odugur, uh, uh, for that. And, and you know that quite a whole lot of people are actually using you know, abusing drugs now. A lot of the elderly, because they won't be able to sleep. I have a, an elderly woman in my church who, who say, I, I can't sleep, I can't sleep. Yes, even though um, it's been found that there is a reduced need for sleep in the elderly and other things like that. But you no, know, for her, it's just purely that she won't be able to sleep. And when she's not able to sleep, there are lots of raising thoughts, um, thoughts from the past, thoughts from everything, things she should have. No, it, it's just a, a huge one. And what Dr. Odupua has just opened up to us this afternoon is something very, very important something that quite a whole lot of people out there are facing because when you're not sleeping then it's an avenue to begin to have a whole lot of terrible thoughts sometimes you begin to assess yourself look at your mistakes and find see ways you have done things right or you haven't done it well and that's now affects you know the way we are able to function and then we are able to move on. Yes, um, thanks for everyone who had sent one thing or the other onto the platform. Yes, thank you so very much, Yaba Voices. I'm um, trying to do so much in terms of um, awareness and helping people to understand more about mental health issues. And you know, Dr. Otukua mentioned something about dementia, social stimulation and other things like that. I, I know quite a whole lot of these old ones are left alone. And sometimes they're straight into the street. I, I you know sometimes you just hear see pictures of people, mothers, um, women out there, and they say they are looking for them. They don't even know where they came from again. And sometimes some of them are beating, and then you will tell them they will say, "I she she's she's a witch. She's just wandering around." These are some of the social things that we have to um, begin to look at. And so that's that's why we are trying to you know increase the volume of this um, on, on this platform this um, this afternoon. I will be taking questions um, subsequently after now. Um, Atubi Rosny says, friendship and social network is a big deal for old people. We might be inviting troubles where we bring them to our well-organized but lonely setting. I quite agree with you. Honestly, I quite agree uh, with you. Please, let's send our questions to the chat box. Our speakers are ready and capable um, to, to deal with it. Now, how can we deal with loneliness um, and old age issues? Dr. Kadri, it, it looks so big it looks so so i don't even know the word to use but how can we deal with this and deal with this adequately thank you very much um 
you know, with, with old age, it comes with that emergence of several complex health issues, you know, commonly um, the geriatric syndrome and other com um, mental um, conditions that Dr. Dugwa has, you know, well laid out very explicitly and for us to be very knowledgeable on what can come with old age. But how can we have fun, you know, um, a fun filled old age, you know, shunning loneliness and, you know, making it work in our favor. The rule of thumb is plan for your, your old age, plan for it. In whatever you are doing right now, as you are saving money, as you are educating your children, as you are, you know, associating with people, plan for your old age. Be very deliberate and intentional about it. Likewise, be very deliberate and intentional about the people in your circle of influence because they are your social capital. They are the people you are likely going to be around with as you grow old. So plan for it. Number two, be appreciative. It's a privilege to be old. A huge privilege that a lot of people are looking for. I go back to COVID-19 again. I, I know people who spent almost a hundred million and they died. So you can't buy money. You can't buy money. It comes and we pray for it. So be appreciative, have that right mindset that is a privilege and it's going to come. And when it comes, you are prepared, you know, to have fun as you grow older because your years of experience, your wisdom, trust me, nobody can pay for it. No matter how much you give back, nobody can really, in real sense of it, monetize those years of experience and wisdom. Then, I want to apologize to everyone. We know we have those old people in our circle. <laughs> they are very WhatsApp techy, you know, hands on. They may not be good on Facebook and all that. One way of dealing with loneliness is that WhatsApp. They will forward, they will call you and tell you to look at what they forwarded. They will tell you to read it and give them feedback. We all have those the elderly people and we appreciate them. Even sometimes you know that it gets to us, but you know, that's why I'm apologizing on all our be on their behalf. So you not know, having techy um, um, uh, items to use, especially WhatsApp, that is a very good way to also you know, deal with loneliness. Then stay in touch with family and friends. Please stay in touch. You know, even if they are out of the country, thank God for WhatsApp, thank God for so many platforms. The, you know, um, now WhatsApp can take more than eight video calls. So please stay in touch with family and friends, visit them physically if it's possible, and of course use the deck. Then stay physically active. Don't just be in isolation and solitary. Move around. Even if you are living alone, you, you are saying you don't have space to move around. Move around your room. The most important thing is just move. You are not a tree. Just move around. That exercise is very good. It doesn't just help to keep you physically and mentally stable. It also helps to boost your feel-good hormones, which we call the endorphins. So please stay physically active. Then be creative. You are old, does it mean that you can't do certain things? You can decide to learn how to play piano, a guitar, if that is what you've really enjoyed in your bucket list and you never really got that time. This is time to tick it off. So be creative, learn on any of those things, write a book. I can imagine me <laughs> reading a book that is written by, you know, uh, um, Joe Biden or you know? Um, 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 uh, um, former president, Lucien Bobasenjo. It's something we look forward to because we want to know how did he get there? How did he, what did he, what were his failures? What were those things? So a lot of people want to read the biography, autobiography of elderly people because of, you know, you want to learn from it. So be creative, write a book, paint, you know, musical instrument. So that's a very good way of dealing with loneliness. You can still go to school. I know of a 65 year old who just graduated this year having a PhD. Please, let's not, not let our limitations limit us. Those are limiting beliefs that because you're older, you don't need to, if you think you, you can do it, then go get it. Go to school, KFC, this common, this general KFC you see everywhere with the pocket of chicken and everywhere. He started that business at the age of 65. If you know you have it in you, you can do it. It's a good way of, you know, getting it out there and, you know, doing something for yourself. Then volunteerism. 
volunteer is a good way of giving back, paying it forward, you know, and it beats loneliness. Volunteer in your church, in your mosque, in your children's school, you know. I imagine a grandpa, my, when my mother comes to my children's school, people rally around her more than me. They want to care from her, they want, you know, those things. So volunteer to, to, to do something for the for humanity for you and also that bits you know uh, lonely, loneliness. Just this morning I went somewhere to see an elderly um 72 year old woman and she was calling Tito Tito and I was wondering who was Tito. <laughs> Guess who is Tito? A <laughs> <Our> dog. <laughs> So adopt a pet, and Tito has children. If we hear the names of Tito's children, you will, you will roll on the floor. I don't even want to go there. A good way of you know dealing with loneliness is also adopting a pet. Have a pet around you. They don't complain. Human beings will complain. Ask your child to go and give you water now. She will frown. She will burn. Oh, mom, you sent me. You are sending me again. But a dog, you know, and studies are also showing us that it helps in dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. So you can have pets around, you can adopt a, a pet and, you know, you can give that pet any name. If you see that dog, it eats more than with people on the street and with, the, with, with, the, with our children all around. So adopt a pet, it also helps to deal with loneliness. Then focus on your health. Please don't neglect your health because if you are not healthy, it makes it more difficult for you to enjoy your old age and that can bring loneliness to you because people around you can easily get tired, caregivers, you know, burden of care. So focus on your health, do your regular checks. If there's any gift your children must give you or you must give yourself, is to see how the uh, HMOs or NHS, whichever one you are dealing with, NHS, whichever country you are in, to so make sure you go for your regular check and make sure you are fit and fabulous. Then join a support group. You know, in as much as, you know, the WhatsApp messages and all that, WhatsApp, there are so many groups you can join. You can join, in fact, physically, it's so more. As I am now, I, you know, it's a deliberate, in, you know, meeting up with family and friends, you know, at, at every week. I, I have a group I'm joining. So join because I'm planning for my old age. So please join a support group. It's important. It's ideal. It's, it, it's, it's, it, it helps to reduce stress and, you know, the triggers and, of course, loneliness that comes with it. Then exploit things around you, you know, move around. When they open up Lagos, Ibadan tray, I didn't have any business in Ibadan. I went to Yaba, packed my car, followed the tray, went to Ibadan, ate Amala, went to Amala Sky, ate Amala, came back to Lagos, because as if I went to work. So exploit things around you, have fun. Old age is a privilege. Not everyone is going to, you know, experience it. So, but because you are there right now, have fun while you are at it. And if you are not there right now, plan for it, be intentional and deliberate about it. Thank you so very much. Maybe the next time you're going to Ibadan, please invite me. I will meet you up at a Bute Beta. Then we can go and then I'll come back together. Please don't go alone. <laughs> Thank you so very much. But you know, um, what Dr. Memono had shared with us, they are very, very important things that you can begin to do. This one does not require medication, not in any way. These are things that you can begin to do. And I hear her say, plan for it, plan. And, and the problem is a whole lot of us will take care of very many people take care of very many things, but we don't pay a plan for the retirement. And it gets to us, and that's what really affects us at the end of the day. Be intentional about it. We also be appreciated that this is a period that a lot of people also want to get to, but they are not there. And then it's also a time to you know, focus and achieve on dreams. I have seen people who are 60, 70, going back to school, doing better things with their life and that's 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 very very important so all of these are very very important things very germane things that dr memona had shared with us so it doesn't even matter where you are now we can pick up from here now and make a change a change that would help us to enjoy this space a change that would help us to enjoy the whole age and also enjoy ourselves enjoy our solitude enjoy you no know, a whole lot of things around us at this point in time now somebody sends a question in i know we're not talking about marriage particularly but she just asked how can i deal with loneliness in marriage dr dukwa will quickly answer that and then we'll come back to the main discussion for today just one or two points that will help this individual um to, to function Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I can see we have a wide array of, you know, of, of, of our audience here. Okay, so loneliness in marriage, that's, that's a big one. But what I would suggest is that you should identify those things that make you happy. 
and those things that don't make you happy. Those things that make you happy, you know, go for them, you know, practice them, be intentional about, you know, having them. And those things that don't make you happy, you know, do away with them. Now, it goes beyond you. You have to also consider your spouse. Does your spouse know that you're lonely in marriage? Talk about it to him, you know, communicate. Let him know how you feel. And you can liven up, you know, the union. There are things you can do together as husband. And if at the spousal level, when you communicate with your spouse, this is not working, you might want to involve, you know, a friend or a family member that you believe you can confide in. For the example, the Catholics will say they have sponsors that they talk to, you know, about their marriage issues and that. You know, you can explore that option as well. And if this is not working, you know, you can find a therapist that you think will help you and your spouse to, you know, fire up that relationship again. So do the things you enjoy doing, be far away from the things that don't make you happy and, you know, talk, talk about it to your spouse and you might need to find help, outside help to liven your marriage. I hear Dr. Odugua say, spice it all. Honestly, if you're going to make it work, you need to spice it up. Sometimes you get tiring, sometimes you get boring, but we have to keep spicing it up for us to be able to keep enjoying it. Thank you so very much. The YouTube, um, the YouTube page of um, Yabo Voice is um, Yabo Voice FNTHY. So the recording will be there. And also on the Facebook page of Yabo Voice, Yabo Voice One Word, this recording um, will be made available on that platform. So thank you very much. You can join that. Um, yes, um, Atumbi Rosni, thank you so very much for um, that kind of suggestion. They go echoing what our speakers have said, that we should prepare for our old age share it into the present, the future, and every other thing, and that helps you to be able to move on. Mrs. Um, Jiringo, I hope I got that very correct. Uh, Lillian, Center for Elderly People, thank you for what you're doing. It's so easy to take care of older ones, so thank you so very much. I celebrate you. Thank you so very much, Pastor Mrs. Well done so very much. And she said again, don't disengage yourself, be creative, and that's so very important. And there's a question here, Dr. Memuna will be taking that for us. For last year, they show where Mimo says, what happens when few old parents want to be alone, even when you want their grandchildren or someone to stay with them? How can we help them? What can we do? Are there, are there, is there any solution? Are there things that they, we can do? Dr. Memuno. Thank you very much. If people want to be alone, let them be alone now. Is there any problem with being alone? Except you are, there's a reason, you are, there's something that you are afraid of. Maybe they, they have a health um, issue, there's a disability, there's a problem, and you are scared that if you, there's no support, then it can escalate. Don't look at it that you know, because they are old and want to get to check grandchildren and, and give them and then they would, they would um, they will be happy. They just, as if it's a thing mom and dad alive, they, they, may just, may they, they may just want to be in that space. I'm in my emptiness syndrome right now. My kids are all out of the house. It's not like they're like married, but you know, this is my time. I'm, I'm just there with my husband. We are rediscovering a lot of things. We are not old though, but the truth is that it may be a time they are discovering a lot of good things around about them and they are reconnecting. So it's only if you have something against them being alone, that is a problem. If for example, maybe it's just your mom, and there's no dad there and she doesn't want people around. Why doesn't she want people around? Is there a problem? Is there a health condition that may escalate if you don't want people around uh, that, that person? Because some of us, we use them as our advanced nannies, just making sure a grandma is around. And then you know, even if you have a nanny, grandma will make sure things are around. So, but the truth is that if there is no problem and they just want to be on their own, let them be. Let's normalize having people saying, I don't want people around me. And I don't want people around me, period. It's a full statement. So except there's a problem with that, swing into action. But if there's no problem, let them have their me time. I, I think it's a good thing if they say they want to be on their own. Thank you so very much. Um, I, I, I love this right here. Uh, this item on the chat that says, from my I just said, wow, fear God, bravo. Yeah, I, I understand that. And yes, I think with what um, the, the solution to loneliness and old age, a whole lot of us can become more intentional 
about it and then we can begin to uh, oh dr Bemuna, somebody is falling in love with your smile here yeah. oh really therapeutic thank you you don't love my own okay planning is key thank you so much for the presentation angela says more importantly it's for children of the age to ensure they pay physical visit up to their aged parent often most um, of this aged parent wants to see them physically and um, if physically it would be impossible video calling and calls will do and that's what dr memuna said earlier you no know, video calls zoom meetings a whole lot of those things are very practicable nowadays yes hugo again says thank you i appreciate this ah oh somebody says i am repenting and i'm calling my mom now all right please do please call your mom you could do a video chat or video call with them and let them just see you and that's also life um, all right, so I have a long one here. Old age, loneliness, mental health. All right, this is just about everything that um, Dr. Memuno had said. Oh, I love this. Uh, this person is actually taking notes. Um, so let's see. Uh, thank you so very much. This individual are uh, taking very, very good notes. And I think if you can screenshot this, um, this will be very important for everyone as a take home um, for today. This is long, but it's also very important. Yes, Fale uh, Shiloye. Thank you so very much too for being here and for your response. I feel easily tired. Um, Dr. Um, Ojukua, can you take that? Thank you for real so What can I do is a clergy and he's saying, I feel really tired. I'm, I'm sure that it's one of the um, old people that we have on this platform. What can he do, Dr. Um, um, Ojukua? What can this person do who feels tired easily? Is there something that we can tell him here? Okay, um, I'd just like to tell him to hang in there, but he should seek for help. He should go and and seek for help. Okay, thank you so very much. All right, so um, since when loneliness has resulted in dementia, loss of cognition, what can we do to assist since it's not reversible? Dr. Memuno, can you quickly attend to that for us? Um, loneliness has resulted in dementia. What can this individual do? Um, we all know that dementia is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder that is big in English, but the truth is that it's, there's no cure, but it can be treated. That means that there are medication, non-medication ways of dealing with dementia. So the focus should be why the person is on medication to stop the progression of you know, getting more severe and becoming more disabled and affecting the person's holistic functioning and productivity. Let's look at the non-medication ways, which I spoke about, you know, um, getting the person, um, you know, um, being around the person, um, if you're a child, visit often, if, it, if not video call, make sure that other physical um, illnesses around the this uh, person uh, also being properly managed. If there are wishful things in the person's bucket list, I want to go to Jerusalem, I want to go to Hajj. This is the period for you to you know, fulfill those things for that individual. Um, just make this old age more uh, awesome, more fun, and more you know, encouraging for that because dementia has no treatment, but the non-medication ways of managing them are the things we've all listed out earlier. And these are things that the children, where wishes, every people around that individual can help this person achieve while the medications are going on. Um, right. and Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Bebuno. We are running out of time, but I want us to take this question from Naji Gabriel. Um, Dr. Dugwa, please get ready to answer this. He said, what happened when the aged person become hostile? They are not friendly. How can we help them? Um, sometimes they are not, they are not um, friendly. How can we help? Very much for that question. So once they become hostile, I think, especially if it's the parents that you already know, you know, so you should know his likes and dislikes or her likes and dislikes and try and avoid or minimize their dislikes and try to, you know, hammer on the likes and dislikes. Sometimes when parents at that age are becoming hostile, are becoming hostile, it might be something that's beyond, you know, something that you can manage as the children. You might need to seek the help of a mental health expert. Okay, so you might need to uh, seek further help for uh, that individual. Yes, Dr. Uh, Professor 
thank you, thank you. Um, Dr. Memuna I already established that, yes, you can decide to be alone uh, and that's also different from um, loneliness. Thank you for echoing that for us. Um, thank you so very much. Yes, yeah, somebody said this is not a time wasted. Thank you so very much. This feedback also encourage us and it helps us to move on. Yes, I'm glad I joined this. Very instructive. Thank you so very much. Um, thank you for everyone that is thanking you, us. No, we, we just love doing this. Uh, somebody said, I'm watching from Oyo. I've, I've daycare center for people are not use the facility because it's not free okay yes um there is an old sense of people's home um it's not free it's yeah, people have to pay at that old age time sometimes they don't have the money i'm a widow all female children got married and are far away hmm. it's not easy if somebody puts home and is able to type it you will know that it's serious he said it's not easy but with this blessed seminar oh i will cook thank you so very much we are glad that this has helped you um yes somebody said again is trying to respond that um, the whole age thing is that the messages are coming in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And on this note, we have to wrap up today. Uh, please again, the, um, the YouTube page of Yabo Voice is Yabo Voice, F-M-P-H-Y. The YouTube um, video for this recording uh, will be posted there. Also on the Facebook, you can join us. We'll take one last word uh, from our speaker, Dr. Jigua. Omut, Omut. So the issue of loneliness in our senior citizens is a, is a big problem and we need to continue with these conversations. And there's a growing need at all levels, the family, community, government, you know, to take responsibility. For example, I want, I, and, I, and I, I dream about a country where there's good education and there are enough jobs for our youths. If there's this, if there are these facilities on ground, we will find, we'll find that less of our children are migrating to other countries. So the government has a big role to play also in providing infrastructure with regards to health, pensions, and so on. And for the elderly, I want them to realize that retirement is not a time to retire. It's just a time to slow down. So retirement might be another phase of you doing something else in your life. For family, for friends, for community, Let's be hands on. Let's take care of our elderly parents. Don't let's abandon them. Even if you can't visit, let's have video calls. If you can have video calls, let's send messages, but don't abandon your elderly ones. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Dr. Memuna, one last word. Thank you very much for everyone on this platform. Please be intentional about getting old. It's a privilege. You may be tired, but definitely not retired. You may be retired, but definitely not tired. Um, so find ways to create fun as you grow older. And for each and every one of us, please be deliberate and intentional about relationships you have now. They are your social capital. They are the people that will help you in regardless of your own direct family members. So each and every one, I wish all of us a graceful old age. Thank you so very much, Dr. Mama. Somebody said, I wish this episode does is not ending, but we have to head. Everything that has a start must have a head. All right, but then somebody made some said something very vital, and that's the fact that yes, we know that old age and loneliness, and that's why we said and loneliness. We will also look at all the domains of loneliness as it appears to every facet of our life. We can also look at loneliness as a whole, uh, without even missing up the other things. Somebody said, Yes, I lost my husband, and it's been a difficult time for me. We will just hanging there reach out to us uh, we are there just just send us a message we would be able to help you uh pull through uh pull through this uh face that you are going through all right so please again please can you put the name of yabo voice on youtube in the chat it's just yabo voice like you have typed it now yabo voice one word just that one word f n p h y you will see all our past episodes they are there. If you have problem with that, just send me a message from either the Facebook page and then we will be able to um, respond to that. Okay, so we will be able to respond to some other things on the Facebook page of Yabu Voice or the Instagram, but just watch out. We'll also be responding to some of those questions and uh, on that platform, but we have to go. Um, we want to uh, just keep to time. So thank you so very much on behalf of the medical director, the head of um, clinicals, and every other members of the Yabu Voice team. I want to say Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we are having you. Please add us. Just no, subscribe to our YouTube page. We don't even need to have. Just subscribe. Send us a message. We will respond to you on the Facebook. Send us a message. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you so very much for 
you know, joining us every every time. Also, we'll come your way again. Please, I want to echo what we have for you. How many of us know that in those days we have that matchas that is iron? Some of us weed on that matchas that the matchas got broken. They had to send it out. That's part of what we were talking about. Any races will be coming your way next time. Thank you so very much. Until you do, take care of yourself. Please ensure that you keep flourishing and enjoying the perfect mental health. So our speakers, thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye. Yeah.